the making of Sarawak. Basically, here when we and and actually my my the, the, my intent in the second part is basically to open our mind in order to understand Sarawak. We need to have a bigger perspective, yeah, a, a big a wider context. Why Sarawak came into existence? What are the historical um, uh, factors or or event that has led to the formation of Sarawak? Basically, right. So. Um, and, and then on, we move into Sarawak within Malaysia, right? What is Sarawak identity within Malaysia? How did Malaysia reconfigure or re reformat uh, Sarawak's identity within Malaysia? And then, then after that, we move on into uh, how do we move forward in terms of the current situation that we are in, the intense globalization that is ongoing in the world today, uh, the interconnect interconnected interconnectivity that has increased over the years with with um, technology especially with the internet yeah so basically digital world and Sarawak is our the, the Sarawak government is keen for Sarawak to be part of the digital economy right so basically that is uh, for um, the, the lecture is basically in four parts right um, next slide please right so I begin with this question um, uh, I want us to bear this in mind because this again later on when we come back to the get back to uh, when we get to to part four these are some these are I think something that we will refer back to why it is important to have a historical perspective to have a wider perspective of where Sarawak began or what made Sarawak where it, uh, as it is today. Identity according to um, Miriam Webster dictionary is who the term who and then the name of a person and then it goes on to say to qualify that the qualities belief etc that make a particular person or group different from others a yeah, particular person particular group different from others right so that's basically um it's uh, the basic definition of what uh, identity is it's basically to differentiate a group or person uh, from others, either through a name or through the quality of the person or through a belief system or, you know, extra uh, um, um, symbols or other, um, or other, later on we'll come into that, right? So, but here, the other question we, 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 we uh, I would like us to pay a particular attention here is, why particular identity in contemporary world? Here, basically, when we think about uh, Sarawak, right? Let's move to the next um, next slide, please. Yeah, right. So th this kind of particular identity that is quite obvious or or quite um, um, yeah, very obvious or perennial in terms of let's say when people describe. Uh, Sarawak in the media or by scholars, the, the, the popular description and representations of, of different people on, on Sarawak. Let's, next, uh, next slide, please, right? So these are some of the, um, um, some of the um, frequent um, uh, description that we can find. Sarawak's population is very diverse, yeah? If you go to online, they always begin to Sarawak's population is very diverse. There are approximately about 28 different ethnic groups in Sarawak. And it is the largest state in Malaysia, the home of 27 ethnic groups with 45 different dialects. Each group has their own unique stories, beliefs, tradition, and cultures. You can meet people from the Iban tribe, known for their legendary headhunting customs from days of old. They have long since ceased headhunting, but they still maintain their rich customs arts, practices, and language. The Orang Ulu, or people from the upriver, comprise of different tribes, such as uh, the Kayan, Kenya, Lunbawang, and Klabit. The exotic art and music has spread internationally as seen in the growing popularity of the boat, lute, or sape. The sape has become the symbol of the Rainforest World Music Festival, one Malaysia's largest musical festival. So. If, if you glean through the internet, these are basically description of what Sarawak is, what it consists. So uh, there are a lot of, underlying this is a lot of hidden histories. Um, 
Sarawak is more than this. There's a lot more to Sarawak than just music, just custom, just this. And, 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 and um, there's more to Sarawak than this. Next one, please. Yeah. And um, an anthropologist, uh, a good friend, Ki Yong, um, he used to be a lecturer in the uni uh, University of New York. And he did his research here in Kuching for a few years on and, and working with looking at the Chinese Hakka. Um, basically, this is what he 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 said in uh, his review of representation, identity, and multiculturalism in Sarawak. With few um, scholars came together, we wrote different chapters contributed to this book edited by Professor Zawawi Ibrahim when he was still a professor at Unimas. This is what he said, uh, this is what he has written um, to comment on the book. He said, I would even suggest that Srawa is a true alchemy of multiculturalism by which parado paradoxical new identities and at times irrational and interesting cultural realities are forged under the language of diversity, right? So when, when, when people look for, um, uh, a prototype for diversity and multiculturalism. People always tend to look at Sarawak and to see um, the plethora of, of cultures and diversities and, and ethnic groups, and, and not only not limited to, to cultures and, 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 and population of human beings, but also that, that kind of, of approach or, or, or representation of Sarawak is basically, it goes into the, the flora and fauna, the diverse um, uh, flora and fauna that exists in the state. So basically, these are, these are some of the um, um, popular description or quotations that we can see about Sarawak. Next one, please. Yeah. Now, uh, sorry, go back to the old one. Yeah, sorry. Is this okay? Sorry, right? But this, I, I would like us to look at. Okay, that is the current description. But what led us to to that place that we to that place where people are now describing Sarawak in terms of, you know, diversity? They begin with those typical description that I have highlighted, right? So, let's look at the making of Sarawak itself. Yeah, this I think it is in, incredibly important to look at this so that we need to understand the place of Sarawak, yeah, in a wider context and through which Sarawak exists and operates, right? So the context is incredibly important, the framework is incredibly important. So I think uh, I've seen uh, quite a bit of political debate and debate and social debate ongoing in, 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 um, in, on Sarawak, on Sarawak politics, Sarawak economy. Oftentimes, I, I notice that um, the debate gets really heated. Um, and oftentimes, it is because there is no very little historical perspective on some of those ongoing issues and debate. I find that in, in discussing current issues, contemporary issues, that is quite uh, relevant to our societies or any societies, including, for, for instance, in the work that I'm doing among the Klabitis, oftentimes when you have a historical perspective or, or a wider perspective about the issue, it keeps, it keeps you, it gives you um, uh, uh, possibilities and options to come up with solutions. So I think that is that is my 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 main reason for for taking us to look at the bigger picture here. Right, so to look within and beyond Sarawak or Borneo or even beyond Malaysia, to look at world politics and international relations, yeah, because these things are constantly changed and they constantly yeah, evolve, and we we are not um, what we got, we are not shielded from these things. We look at the situation today, COVID nineteen, and and how the whole world is affected by this. So there is there is um, and and Sarawak itself as a state. Yeah, on the island of Borneo, we can't escape the impact of this ongoing situation, the pandemic, uh, and 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 the pandemic, and and how pandemic is changing the society today, right? So how it is almost like reorganizing society at every level, yeah. So um, and we can't escape. So we need to look at um, 
the, the past in order to see, right, okay, with this constant evolution, right, of, of, of in, in, in the international system, how do we, Sarawak as an, an, as an actor in the system, can move forward on the world stage, right? So I just want us to look back at, Sarau, at, at, the, few, at the past to, cut, to, to, to see how we can move forward. Right, next one, please. Yeah. Um, let's begin with the, the Borneo Island, which is the house of, you know, which houses Sarawak. Yeah. If you look at history, I don't want to go um, into detail with this because it's quite a, quite a lot about Borneo Island on, on the internet and also books and articles and, and um, scholarly articles and, 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 um, and also uh, non-scholarly articles about Borneo. But what's in what's interesting about Borneo? It's the third largest island in the world, and if you read world history, oftentimes you don't find Borneo mentioned particularly at the center of what's going on in the world. It's always mentioned is at the backwater of of what's going on in on the international stage. But if you look at Borneo closely, right, looking at its place, looking at its people. Uh, looking at objects and ideas from the island of Borneo, you see it's a place that connect. It connect ideas, it connect objects, it connect people through time and space, right? So, so it's a place that way where it draws uh, people to to its to to its island. Maybe not in a spectacular way, but in quiet ways. It it attracts ideas. It attracts objects. For instance, like beads and 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 jar and jars and many other things that you find in other parts of the world, they, you find them in the, in the center of Borneo, right? So these are patterns of human flows. And, and this is, you can see this uh, manifested in cultural practices of traveling far and receiving guest hospitality in long houses, cultural practices of Bajalai, for instance, traveling far, or oh, uh, Mengarang Mado, for instance, among the Kalabit. And I think, uh, Quite a number of uh, there are many other local terms among the among the ind indigenous people about the the, uh, the the cultural practices of leaving their villages, going far to to gain knowledge, to gain experiences, and to return to the village. Right, right. So you can also looking at um, one of my colleagues, for instance, um, have just just done some work on indigenous um, boats in Sarawak, and. The, 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 the significance of these indigenous boats and their, and their roles in economic interconnectivity through ancient trade routes that cuts across Borneo. And oftentimes we look at those boats, we don't see, we, we hardly see the significance of those and what do, they, what do they say about our identity, about who we are as a people, right? So, and through this um, idea of mobility, uh, cultural practices of, of traveling far, um, many, 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 many um, ideas are adop uh, adopted, ideas that, uh, that originate from other places. They are adopted and adapted into, um, into, into the local situations, I mean, local context, into the local environment to be, and then adopted as their own. A good example is, for instance, is uh, club, uh, the club it do not, produce our own beads. We don't, we don't even know how the techniques of making beads, but we end up you know, saying uh, many different beads in the Highland is clubbed beads, right? Like, so, um, and giving them names, giving them significance and identifying their texture and how they, and what are their roles or their status within the community and how these beads in themselves, it at the end, determine a person's status or family status within the community. So these are basically uh, the idea of adopting and adapting ideas and objects and peoples and within to become part of the community is so much part of who we are as a people, right? So the hospitality um, um, and how we embrace even those who are different from us to be part of who we are as a people, right? So that is quite, if you look at Borneo, look at history, uh, it, it is there. Of course, there are situations like headhunting. We will come to that later on. But at the same time, 
at the same time, our communities have, have ways of how to specify those things based on our adapt or our values, right? Next one, please. Right. So that is, right, so um, again, uh, this is my, 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 uh, my uh, this is basically repeating what I, I said earlier, the, the descriptions are often simplified and exclude historical narrative. This is why, why I would like to look, take us to, right, we are now Sarawak being part of Malaysia on the island of Borneo, now we are Sarawak being part of Malaysia, right? So let's look at history, how, did we get to where we are now with the emergence of modern nation state, right? Someone um, told me the, um, many, many years ago, a little history is always instructive. It's always give us instruction about the present and also about the future, right? So it's always good because history, we know that through ancient wisdom, history basically repeat itself. It's just a matter of intensity, right? Intensity. Uh, uh, it, it, it takes place and, and let's move on, move on to the next um, uh, slide, please. Right, so um, because this is, I know um, I'm, my assumption with this is basically is training the young ones. I, I, I want to echo the, uh, the, uh, the uh, perception by uh, Professor James Chin when he opened the, um, in, in his inaugural lecture, he said his, his passion is for the, his hope is for the next generation in Sarawak, right? The next, the, few, the, the, the younger generation to see what do they have to say or what do they have to do? Well, how are they making Sarawak basically? So that is why uh, my, my uh, that is partly why the lecture today is designed like this, just to give them some ideas. I think my, my, in my interaction with young people, younger generation and in, including my work as, as a university lecturer, sometimes a lot of our kids, they are deprived of certain perspective, historical perspective or, or the bigger picture. So basically this is um, just to a, a very, um, uh, it's not tidy, it is basically very, very rough idea to provide us with an historic development of the international system with reference to Europe. And I know some of you may be thinking, why refer to Europe? We can't escape it because the, the, the Sarawak that we know, the modern nation state that we know in terms of Malaysia and all Singapore and all those things basically came from a particular system that has evolved and has developed in Europe. Like, so if you look at the history of the international system, there's the ancient civilization, we, uh, civilizations in school, we have seen some of the civilizations, the Chinese civilizations, the, um, the, 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 the uh, uh, Central Asia, uh, Middle Eastern civilization, and in and, and, and Southeast, uh, Southeast Asia civilization. So all those different civilizations, they are there in ancient civilization that we see the emergence of the Greek empire, the, the, the empire system then evolved, then, then, then um, emerge with the Greek Empire, the Roman Empire, Byzantine Empire, and leading to uh, what we call the Italian city-state, right? Some of us, we have watched movie, movies like Athens and Sparta. That is what we call the Italian city-state. And, and, um, and with that Italian city-state, uh, I'm sure um, the chairperson today will be able to give us more um, uh, instruction in on that later on the the, the 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 30 years war in Europe that time that led to that was, that was only ended with the Treaty of Westphalia in 1648 that has led to the birth of the nation state right so with the birth of the nation state and then the the, the rise of modern nation state and then overseas expansion with colonialism and then the World War II and then the Cold War and the end of Cold War and the end of the Cold War now with the red button there that is represent today, right? So, and, and you see the, 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 that is basically um, the, the basic understanding of, of the, the historic development of, in the, of the international system. Later on, we try to look at where is Sarawak in this? Where is Borneo in all this? Yeah, because we don't, um, nothing basically evolve or exist in a vacuum. Right. They must, they, they are contexts, they are wider or larger contexts, right, that, that, um, that, that uh, we need to look at. Next, uh, next uh, please. 
right? So this is basically, I want to highlight this because this basically um, some, some, some of you may be asking, why do we have to go back to those uh, treaty? Those happened in Europe and those happened many years ago and they have nothing to do with, with our life today. Some, some perhaps some uh, making that kind of, um, of perception, but they do have, yeah, up to today, the Treaty of Westphalia in 1648 has still has impact on us, on our, on the very, um, um, in, on, 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 on the no notion of Sarawak itself, right? So, right, so uh, next one. The peace treaty basically determine, this is what I want to look to, to show us, determine and establish borders within European and particular the Western Europe and the state and the emergence of the state system. Uh, let's go back to the, the previous uh, um, slide, sorry, right? So this coincide with the development of national markets, the modern nation state and the appearance of world markets and the global international community. And these are basically the, 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 the impact of, of the Treaty of Westphalia. Next uh, slide, please. Right, so it, it gets the idea of border, yeah, territorial borders. As, as, um, as a mean to determine yeah, the power of, of the state, yeah, the limit of the power of the state, right? So political borders become incredibly important, right? So uh, next one. So it ended, um, the, yes, it ended the 30 years war, the birth of the state system, right? And, and, um, and of course the notion of Equi equilibrium of power among the European powers, the notion of sovereignty and territorial holding. Yeah? These become basic elements of modern state. Right? Many of us, we take these things for granted that uh, we are so protective of Sarawak borders. We are so protective about who we are as Sarawak, Sarawak for Sarawakian, our sovereignty. We want, to, we, want to, we want to fight and ensure that Sarawak is independent. And, 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 and make sure that our borders are protected. We tighten our, our policing at our, our, at our um, immigration, right? So very tight immigration rules, right? So all this thing came from this treaty, right? So we cannot say we, these things do not have impact on us today. The way that we, we run our state has impact on this. So non-interference in domestic affairs of other states came from this treaty. Yeah, and the concept of uh, diplomatic immunity, right? Um, um, uh, this has, still has impact on how we organize our, our, our nations, our countries. And I'm, I'm, um, I'm sure Dr. Tanam, we can even give us insight into those, um, more into those um, um, concept and, and practice on, in nation building, yeah? So basically, but basically it's recognition that the state, not the church, were able to exercise political power. Basically, that's one of the most important impact of Treaty of Westphalia to the suppression of, re, of, of the church from the, from, from the state, yeah, from exercising a political power, right? Next one, right? So this is basically with that treaty, you see the shaping of, of the continents of the world. Again, go ahead, uh, go in. Next one, yeah. So modern nation state, the formation of modern state. A lot of us, um, we take this thing for granted, right? So I tell my students, I tell, I put them a map like this. I said, these things, these things is not, are not natural. They didn't just appear like that, that when, if you are a believer, when God created the earth, it just didn't happen like this, right? So there have been historical events, there have been um, factors, there have been ongoing, uh, um, uh, what they call it, um, uh, forces that has made the world to be where, how you see today, the maps that we see, the colors on, on the maps, if you look at the global maps, different color, different, different color often is used to indicate a particular country with, dif with very definitive territorial and with the border being, being very uh, important to indicate the, 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 the area of that place. Right, so all these things came out of, of, of the significance of the border came out of mainly from uh, the Treaty of Westphalia, right? So 
um, a very, very um, um, prominent political scientist when he studied, let's say, for instance, the concept of power and the state in Southeast Asia, right? Southeast Asia. And, and he always said in Southeast Asia, it's, it's quite different when we talk about the notion of power. He always suggests that it is about the control of people. Right. In Asia, it is about the control of people. How many people, how do you control the, the population? Right? It's not so much about the clear, the clear boundary between one, one country or one group of people and, with another group of people. It is about how does a leader, yeah, how does a leader control its population? Yeah? Control its population. And how does he draw more people to himself? Right, so so he came up with the idea that is why in 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 Southeast Asia, Benedict Anderson said that the the idea of 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 inner power for that being used by the leaders to pull to pull uh, people to themselves to, so that they can control them and 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 that's basically his um, his notion. But with with the introduction of with the Westphalia Treaty, he said it gives uh, a different idea of power. Where the the, the 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 leader of a country, whether you are at the periphery of the nation or at the center of the nation, your power remains the same, right? So the prime minister in Kuala Lumpur is still the prime minister in Barrio, although Barrio is very far removed from Kuala Lumpur, although Barrio is even closer to Indonesia rather than 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 the center of power in Malaysia, but still, yeah, the the power of pr the prime minister in Barrio is the same as his power in Kuala Lumpur. So basically that is uh, some, some of the um, ongoing uh, discussion about concept of nation state and their impact around the world, right? So next one, please. Right, so in, in Southeast Asia, this is the, the, the implications of, 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 of the historic development of the, of the same system here in Southeast Asia and in fact, on us here, the pre-colonial time, the subjugation under colonial rule, the anti-colonial struggles, the restoration of independence, beginning with the birth of Indonesia, Philippines, Cambodia, Laos, Burma, and Malaya, right? And the Cold War and the Vietnam War. And all of this actually do have impact on us in the, in, in, in the very making of Sarawak, the foundation of Sarawak, these things we need to take into consideration. So if we have this, this bigger picture in mind, then we can also then begin to understand why our ancestors, why our forefathers made certain decisions, right? Made certain decisions, why they have to agree to certain decisions. Yeah, because the situations then, probably, probably the context then was quite different today than it is today. So sometimes it is easy to provide critique <clears throat> when you're not there. Uh, so that is why um, I think um, the Maori said, "Do not, do not offend the hua of your ancestors by providing critique without understanding the context." Right. So um, they are they are quite careful in terms in terms of that. Right. So they, they even have a term for it. So do not offend the hua, yeah, the the bigness of your ancestors without understanding the context of the, the some of the histories and why they have to make certain decisions yeah, and in that particular point of time, right? So next one, please. Yeah, so again, look at that, the experience, we can look at the bigger picture, the historical experiences with the member state, right? So all of this, yeah, if you go into detail, it has impact on each and every nation state or every, every what we call countries here in Southeast Asia from the pre-colonial time and the colonial rules except Thailand, the anti-colonial struggles, right? Next one, uh, slides. Yeah. Here again, the restoration of independence. Yeah, the form, and here, Malaya, Cold War, and, and, and the formation of ASEAN. And for us here, the formation of ASEAN is, in, is important uh, for us to, to, for us to look at because as part of the reason, one of the roots root of, of the form of formation of ASEAN is basically um, um, what darurat yeah perang darurat when 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 Indonesia 
the president then declare um, darurat terhadap Malaysia, perang darurat terhadap Malaysia. So, so this, these are the things that actually Bonio is part of those things, those processes. But we don't we don't seem to highlight or we don't take time to look into it and to see uh, the significance of this event uh, on 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 our position today. Uh, next one, please. Next slide. All right. So again, uh, all right. So so that's next slide. I've already described those historical events. So this is basically uh, Southeast Asia as a result of that uh, historical event. Um, so it has bearing, and all these things has bearing on who we are and our position today. And uh, so sometimes um, we we get caught in very parochial um, debate and without thinking about the bigger picture, right? So our perspective can be quite narrow sometimes. From uh, I mean that is my 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 perspective sometimes looking and being part of debate about what is the way forward for Strawa, right? So we need to see, understand that, you know, there are, there are bigger, um, there are wider or bigger forces around the world that can have impact on us. So that is why we need to, going back to that question, what is identity? Identity is about the qualities of the people. It can be about, it can be about belief. So what are the qualities of, of Sarawak and how do we negotiate our way through those? Again, Go next to the next slide, please. Okay. Right, so impact on Borneo and Sarawak, the arrival of colonialism and subsequent emergence of post-colonial nation states in the region have significantly reconfigurated and reordered the patterns of human flows within the region. So this is, so we have Indonesia, we have Malaysia, we have Brunei on the same island, right? Three nation states on one island, right? With uh, with Sabah, Sarawak, uh, Kalimantan, and Brunei, four different, um, four different, um, uh, what do you call it, um, uh, administrative system on the same island, right? Under three different nation states. So this pattern, this new pattern, has reconfigured the, the patterns of, uh, of of human flows, the, the flow of not only human, the flow of ideas, the flow of people, the flow of objects into the into the island, right? Okay, next one. Okay, so I uh, would like us to look at, this is basically the change of Sarawak boundary from 1841. If uh, This is basically a video um, prepared by my colleague, Professor Tamiji at the Faculty of Social Science and Humanities, just to give an idea about, you know, sometimes when we think about Sarawak, again, sometimes we always think that Sarawak is, you know, it's, it's, it's naturally came like that, but we, we, we forget to, to see even the extension of the geography of Sarawak or its, its territory is something that we need to pay attention to. Can you, are you able to play it? Thank you. Uh, next slide. So basically, we came up with a song to describe um, um, Sarawak, right? So uh, we went to school. We we sing uh, the song um, 
I think when I went to school earlier, there's a different song, the Faye Sarawak, and then now Sarawak Pertiwi. I had to learn it when I went to Tanjong, right? So basically, so sometimes we, we forget to look at the, the historical perspective that the, the, the Sarawak that we see today had a process, it had certain uh, historical event that allow it to be where it is, that led it to where it is. And, and I want to highlight here, yeah, even when I talk about the bigger picture, right, the bigger picture, the international system that led to the formation of Sarawak, I'm not trying to, to say that our people were just a reception or, or, or victims of historical events. No, actually, if you read, and, and, and I've done quite a bit of research as, as, as an anthropologist, uh, but also very interested in history, like, in a, and you can see that from my presentation, I'm very interested in culture, but also I'm interested in the role of history, right, in making, in making society, in making cultures, in making people, right? So if, if, if you, um, I will look at the, 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 the Westphalia Treaty, but if it, it's not just the Treaty of Westphalia that has shaped Sarawak. We also yeah, have practices that make it, that also akin to, to, to the Westphalia Treaty, what we call the peacemaking, yeah, in the making of Sarawak. Now, this, is, this, this refers to adapt in the values of reconciliation to end a state of war, right? So, and, and uh, Dr. Valerie Mashman, who used to be, uh, she was my PhD student, has done quite a bit of work on, on peacemaking and especially the peacemaking in Baram. And if you look at, or look at um, the, 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 um, the, the, what they call the territorial extension of, Sar of Sarawak earlier, Right, they start coaching it goes, move on. So Baram is basi basically is the last territory to be, to be, uh, to be, to be brought into part of Sarawak. And if you look at the study uh, historically, is peacemaking plays an incredibly important role in that. Yeah, the art, the, the practices among the local communities, the uh, of of practices of blood brotherhood, kinship and marriage. That is basically uh, a practice of of to, to, to bring reconciliation, to, uh, to end a state of war and warfare. Now, I've done quite a bit of research on, on um, headhunting among the club. Um, I was quite taken aback um, when I realized that there was so much feud. But I think when I was born, um, the club became Christians. We are very, I mean, very Christian. So people were living in, in I think much more at ease, much more peaceful, much more, um, you know, united, I think. Uh, and, and when I did research on our history, I realized that Pabuno, yeah, or uh, headhunting was quite rampant and the feud between families was quite intense until when, when then I realized there have been many, there's some peacemaking that has to be made in order to pacify people, to bring people the pacification of, of different tribes and different longhouses. Right, so massive pacification in on the Baram through a series of peacemaking, and the biggest was in in 1899, which 6,000 people attended. Right, so and 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 the description by by um, Dr. Valerie Mashman is quite incredible, and the roles of not just not just the colonial officers, but the roles of the local leaders, yeah, how they draw on local adapt in order to pacify, to bring people together and then to be part and to be part of Sarawak. How they draw people from, from the other side or at the, uh, at, the, at the outside of what Sarawak's territory then, draw them within the system through adat, through the art of pacification, right? So peacemaking, for instance, in the Klabit Highland in 1908, which included the Klabit and the border tribes. And then also in, in in the Kapit area, in, in closer to the Kapit area, the Long Nawang peacemaking in May in 1927 between Ibans of Bale and Apokayan, Kenya. And then, and the biggest is basically the Kapit peacemaking in November 1924, which brought together the local populations of Iban, Kayan, Kenya, Kajang, and the counterparts from the Apo Kayan in Dutch Borneo, 
involving 4,200 natives, including the Apokayan Kenya delegation, consisting of 960 men who arrived in 97 canoes from the Apokayan. And then actually, one of the things we aimed to do um, uh, last year was actually before the pandemic was to come to, uh, to, to organize a conference on this and the, the, the significance of carpet peacemaking. Yeah, and basically it is uh, very important in a sense that it end um, feuds or or head hunting practices on on in the island. Where in this in this peacemaking um, practices or 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 ceremonies where people take brotherhood, um, blood brotherhood, or they they they, they have um, rituals to make sure that everybody abide to the abide to the to the to the peacemaking, yeah. If you, for instance, for instance, if you read closely the Kapit peacemaking, when they slaughtered, there, there were some uh, pigs were slaughtered in as, as to mark the rituals, and there are things that have been pronounced. Should anyone, yeah, should anyone defy what has been made into peace, let there be a taula come on that person. So that is why you see nowadays. Um, uh, Quite, quite a number of people sometimes ask me, uh, how come Srawakians, uh, they are quite, they think we are passive, they think we are, we are not, we are not um, aggressive enough. But these are some of the things that has governed the lives of our, our older generation, our, our forefathers, our ancestors. They knew, they knew and they know the significance of this peacemaking. Right. So I remember my grandfather, for instance, when he used to tell me stories of his travels down to Baram because of the, 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 the peacemaking that was, that was instituted. So they were able to travel freely to Baram without, without fear and how they used to have what they call the blood brotherhood where they rub their blood on, on, on each other to indicate yeah, that, they are, that th those are covenant that you shouldn't break, that you shouldn't attack one another. So those are things that has actually very important in the making of Sarawak. Yeah, the values that we draw from, from our adat that govern the lifestyle or govern the everyday life or, or even our perception of the world, the perception of the cosmology and so on and so forth. Right, next one. Right, so um, this is incredible. Uh, this is the, the the importance of this. Um, uh, the carpet making um, was highlighted, if you by a letter from the chief secretary of Sarawak on the carpet peacemaking. You can find the letter still in the in in the archive. He says the Sarawak natives re reciprocated in a remarkable way, and it is thought that the peacemaking in itself will remain for a very long time in the memory of of a, of of those who attended it. And that is a factor in the future prosperity on the Dutch Rawa border. It will have a far-reaching and beneficial effects. Right. So, that is basically. Uh, so the actions of the local people means a lot in this. That it is not. Um, um, in Valerie's work, she highlighted the work, the the role of of Tamabulan, for instance, in making possible the the Baram peacemaking in Marudi, that was attended by six thousand people that time that is not easy to mobilize a number of of uh, that number of people at that time they will travel from far down up river down river and they came together to have um to 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 have the ceremony in maruti that time what they call the cloud the, the, the cloud um town at that time right next please yeah. so these are some. These raise questions. So the bigger picture, the, the um, raise question for what are the what are the applications to the founding of Sarawak, the formation of Malaysia, Sarawak contemporary position in national regional politics and beyond. Sarawak, how about Sarawak identity in all of this, right? So, um, um, um the others have dealt with, uh, you know, Sarawak in Malaysian politics. The the um, uh, last week we listened to. Um, a, lecture, a, a lecture by the former um, attorney general provided a very good perspective on, on the legality of Sarawak within in, in Malaysia. So uh, the other lecturers I'm sure will deal with that. So, but let's just look 
think a bit about Sarawak identity in all of this. Right, next one, please. Especially, right? Especially Sarawak within Malaysia. Yeah, the reconfiguration of Sarawak within Malaysia. Next one, please. Now, for, for, for today, currently, yeah, when we talk about identity, as mentioned by, by Professor James in his first lecture, when we talk about identity today, it is about the politics of identity, right? It became quite ingrained. It, it's almost, especially I guess for, for the younger generation who have no um, access perhaps, who have no time to, to look into the things of, you know, how, how things has evolved to become where, how it is today. And, and I can see even through my students' work uh, in the final year projects or even in their assignments, when, you pro when we talk about these things, some of them as if it is, uh, they've never heard of it, or um, you know, it is something that they don't pay attention closely, the origin or where it come from. And all they know is nowadays it is like, okay, Malaysia is, you know, Malaysia is, consists of three, three um, races, the use of the word races, Chinese, in, uh, Indian, and Malays, and the others, right? So, so but, they, but there are reasons why, why things have become the way it is, right? So, of course, uh, many of us, we know about the new economic policy that was instituted in, 19, in uh, 1970 with the idea of uh, to eradicate poverty, right? So, again, this is actually if you go back to, to the root of this, this came out of, of you know, the, the idea of development uh, that has, that has um, a particular notion of development that have shaped the understanding of how nation building should be, should be um, pursued, right? So it's an affirmative action strategy to achieve un uh, national unity by eradication of poverty regardless of race and compensating for economic imbalances across racial lines, right? So basically um, the idea is to eradicate association of race with economic function and restructure the way how way people live. And I think, um, uh, I hope um, some of us who, have, who, know, who are not familiar with new economic policy, take some time to even search the internet and to look at what is new economic policy, right? So next one, please. Yeah, right. So the NEP, I guess the, um, um, how would I, I don't want to be too, I guess one of the most, I would say ingrained and painful for some uh, impact of the new economic policy is the emergence of identity politics. Yeah, the identity politics and that how that has determined access to resources and political power in our country. And I think this is something that is, um, that is undoubtedly has impact many parts of Malaysian society. Right, so it has induced ethnic and religious-based competition, and 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 um, and uh, at one level, at another level is the ongoing debate about how much state has power, what state uh, against the federal, how much federal has power over the state. Right, so these are some ongoing debate at different level and different uh, from different uh, angle at the moment. Right, so but. Um, the, in terms of identity, we can see, yeah, it has the identity politics has in great implications, the quota system into different, um, into different um, segments of, of, of into seg segments and different fabric of our society, of our nation, right? So, and it has been painful for, for some, and, 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 and it is something that, that is going on and then actually, we can consider kind of like a, a, a deep wound, right? So that needed to be, that, needed, that, that really need to be attended and, and for our country to move forward. And in, in terms of um, uh, identity, uh, there are different form of identities and how identities are defined nowadays as a result of the formation of Malaysia. We have what we call the authority, uh, uh, getting the, the idea by, by um, 
Samshul Amri, Professor Samshul Amri, Amri, the authority defined identity. Yeah, they defined identity for us. The constitution gave certain identity to certain groups, and 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 it becomes um, um, becomes the basis for for access to resources and political power and so on and so forth, yeah, the quota system. And, and other notion of identity, ethnic identity imposed by the authority, yeah, such as through population census, yeah, uh, uh, upon, a, upon particular group, yeah, not necessarily correspond with everyday defined identity members of the group have of themselves. Right, so this is by Wylan Jeffrey J uh, Home and, and, and she did, uh, she has produced a good paper on this, uh, the authority defined uh, identity and ethnic identity and how this play out here in Sarawak, in the context of Sarawak, right? So uh, next one, please. Yeah, here we, here, uh, the, 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 one of the most defined, um, impact is basically ethnic categories it becomes fixed yeah really just become cultural units become incredibly important it become it define it define almost how people interact yeah and it basically has great implications on the way how societies used to be organized here in borneo right so there's fixed fixed boxes fixed categories yeah some are defined by the authority for instance I remember um, Tibet about, for instance, in, in my own in my own villages, and um, why would some of the some Kalabit who who convert to Islam, why should they leave their 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 who they are as a people from being Kalabit and become Malay? So these are some of the debates that has been going on. It's been painful debate at the at in the village and also among families. Right, so um, it, I don't, yeah, I don't know how much to get into this, but I'm sure everyone uh, had your own particular experience about what's going on with 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 these processes. Yeah, so ethnic designations are normalized and filled with stereotypes. Now, I just want to highlight this thing. Yeah, the the ethnic labeling that becomes so typical nowadays that some of the young some of the young people think this is this is normal that this is this is what it that is that's how it is has always been right so i want to highlight the work of 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 two of my colleagues in unimas uh, by uh, associate professor ting siu he and jerome collins and they they look at um, how uh, portrayal of ethnicity in newspapers featuring strawa news right next one we look at some of the labeling, yeah, prominent distinguished ethnic labels that are being used that they found out, right? So I don't know how can you make this cut big anyway. Prominent distinguished ethnic labels. You look at Bidayu, some of the, and these are, they found out from the, they, 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 they capture this from the media, right? So they have certain, uh, I can't remember the date, a certain, um, they, 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 they kept the date from which date to, what date and also the um, the newspapers that they, the media that they have done their research with or into right so bidayu uh, the word phrase and 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 terms and acronyms used right so singer technical and training skills their barisan national their fair fair representation complacency yeah right bidayu women wake up and compete. You know some of so this is some of the ethnic labels that they have. You can find on Bidayu musical, complacent, lazy, disloyal, right? Naive, innocent, easily deceived, gullible, clan members, yeah. Politically under, underrepresented, and then Bumi Putra, right? The traders, the trust fund. Oh, okay, let's just look at the ethnic label there: traders and entrepreneurs, so Chinese. Education oriented, education schools, uh, teachers training debate, uh, preserver of culture, and um, next one, please. Yeah, of traditions. So you see the Chinese New Year, Chap Gome, disloyal, courteous and respectful, traders, entrepreneurs, leaders, community leaders, clan members, private sector workers, of, or self employed. So, all sorts of, 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 of labels being used. Now, the Daya, they are disloyal. Yeah, perceiver, 
uh, preserver of culture and tradition. How about the Iban? They are musical, they're disloyal, so preserver of culture and tradition, religious leaders, clan members. Next one, please. Yeah. And leaders are their headmen. Now, these are basically the Srawakians. When, 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 you, when, when they look at what the, the labels are being used on Srawakians, by Srawakians, yeah, and, and descriptions are being used. Yeah, so unskilled labor, detained Srawakians, chawat, brim, intelligence, smell, uh, smell lies, miss global international Malaysia, uh, common language, no ocean too wide to cross, right? So these are basically some of the label, unskilled, criminal, uh, preserver of culture and tradition, intelligent, beautiful, poor and dependent, risk taker, no ocean too wide to cross, and state oriented people. Yeah, Sarawak for Sarawakian. So these are some of the things that they have find, that they found um, quite um, uh, glaring in, represented in the media that they have uh, referred to as, as, you know, as their field work, basically to look at ethnic levels for, for different ethnic groups in Sarawak. Next one, please. Yeah. Right, so what does all this mean to an identity for Sarawak? Yeah. So are we going to, um, um, recently this, I know there was a, been a, a big um, uh, uh -ha when, when, um, our, when the prime minister, the current prime minister pronounced Sarawak and Sabah is our is a wilaya territory, right? So this was ongoing debate, it's a mistake and it's, it's challenging the Sarawak uh, sovereignty, uh, it's demeaning to Sarawak and so on and so forth. Personally, I didn't, I didn't find it uh, bothered, uh, bothering because to me, actually, it is more empowering. Yeah? If, they, if you go back to history, yeah, Borneo, if you think about Borneo as a territory, yeah, it is more, more uh, what do you call it, more um, empowering that the people were able to form their own at that time. Yeah, they were able to use to, 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 to draw on their own, on the values, on the, the practices and to, to form and, and to create, right? To draw on the nature or to draw on, on, on the characteristics of the territory itself, the geographical territory. And you see, and, and the geographical territory of Sarawak did not keep people from moving, right? So one of the things that, that fascinated me in, in, in my work was, actually that is why I was, quite interested to go back and do uh, anthropology of my own uh, community was, I was quite, in, I was quite perturbed how come uh, beads became incredibly important among, among the Klabit, for instance, certain, certain, certain kind of beads, the blue beads, the yellow beads, why were they like that? And certain, um, why, how come we have these huge big jars in our, I, I grew up in, 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 in my parents' house, in the long house, we have three big jars, in uh, old jars, ancient jars in, 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 in our house. And I, was, I always wondered, how did those get there, right? So then I begin to do research and understand how people used to move and all the cultural practices, all the, the little, little things that they have to do in order to, to get down to the, to, to, to the, to, to the closest, uh, trading port for Marudi and those days about um, a month for them to get down and then come back. How they used to do sood, meaning they have to they have pack their food in, 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 in one bag and then they send the food first and then leave it. Then, then they come back for the uh, come back and then take another the other um, bakang, the other basket, yeah, where they have all the trading items like uh, the damar, the tobacco, and the salt that they used to carry down. And then they carry that, and then they sleep on that, and then they do again the next, the next time. So it takes them about a month to do those. Yeah, That's, that's who we are as a people. That, that is not limited to, to the club. It, and I think if you, you go in, I read the, the history of the Kenya, the Kayan, or even including, you know, it, to say, our brothers and sisters, yeah, 
the, the, those ones that came from China, I've done a bit of research into the, their migration into Strava, into Bono. That too takes a lot of, a lot of effort, a lot of uh, risk takers yeah, going across the ocean. So I think we need to celebrate those kind of values. Yeah? Go back to those and values that, that make us who we are today. Yeah, Sarawak, when, if you look at history, as I mentioned just now, Sarawak is not just uh, become Sarawak because of what happened in, in yes, I mean, it, it, all those had implications on Sarawak, but also our own people, our own ancestors, our own forefathers have been very much involved in the making of Sarawak. Yeah, the values has been there. So Borneo, uh, basically a distinct territory and, 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 and that, as I mentioned, you know, the adoption and adaptation of, of, of ideas from, from different groups as they met at the Tamu, for instance, in those days, plays incredibly important roles where people meet in the, at the Tamu in different riverine system, right, for them to meet, right, to exchange uh, trading items, right. So that has led to what we see today described being used on Sarawak is the cultural diversity, or some people say cultural pl pluralism. Uh, I had um, an interesting uh, discussion the other day, the difference between these two. I think cultural diversity represents Sarawak more. If we go into pluralism and in the work of, of, of uh, Funival, uh, pluralism is basically use that, bas that term basically to describe a society that mix only when they get to the market. Market is the place where they mix and then they go back and then they are, they don't mix with the other groups. But diversity is basically a person can be, you know, I can, um, I think this represent, uh, I would suggest represents Rawa more. I'm a clubbit, but I'm a Christian at the same time, right? And those two, you know, I embrace those two, uh, those two identity with, with an ease. So I don't have to be, I don't have to unbecome clubbit in order to become Christian, right? So. So the ability to hold those things together, right? So those I think are important, um, um, I think um, ability that Sarawakian has that we take it for granted, yeah? That perhaps other people are like that, that it is normal, but actually those things that we are able to do that because we have a particular shared history, we are full of histories that we can draw on and experiences that we can draw on that make us who we are today. Next one, I'm coming to close, all right. So today we still see, you know, the, the, the histories and the persistence of cultural practices of, of moving around, connections to travel far. Yeah, maybe they are in different form, but I think sometimes we forget that we are basically uh, as I mentioned just now, uh, history repeats itself. It's, it's just a different form or different, maybe the, the, what we're doing is in a different, the, the intensity is quite different in a sense or more, more intense. So connections are still quite important for us. Yeah, high level of mobility and many Sarawakians, we, we move, we move, uh, we left Sarawak uh, to go out of Sarawak. I think many, many Sarawakians are living in Kuala Lumpur and different places in, in in uh, Sinanjong, Malaysia, right? So an expansion of views and knowledge to learn other languages and adopt and adapt objects to the environment. Now, one of the things I want to highlight here is um, that was quite a, um, a wake up call for me one day. I went to, uh, I was, I went to the market in, in um, Stutong, the supermarket and to buy, and I, I ordered the fish. So there was a boy there at the uh, cutting fish. So I said, um, can I have this fish please? And uh, so I said, um, uh, can you clean, clean the fish and then put it in a plastic? I'll come back and pick it up later and pay you. And then he looked at me, he said, are you Filipino? I said, no. Uh, and he said, so what are you? I said, I'm a clubbit. I'm from and then he, he kind of scolded me and said, then why do you speak English? Why do you speak English? Why don't you use Bahasa Malaysia? I was, I was so taken aback. I walked and I was thinking, I said, wow, that is so quite different from how I grew up. My grandfather, he was, he was illiterate. He didn't know how to read. He didn't know how to write, but he spoke five languages. 
and for him it's like you know he went down travel down river to maruti he learned iban he learned kayan he learned kenya he he learned uh, ngorek i think five yeah five different languages he was able to speak those languages for him it is about mastering of the knowledge of the others when you master the language but these are some of the things i i guess uh, i I couldn't go back to buy that fish from get pick up the fish from the from the fish monger afterwards. I was, I was I was so perturbed because it's just so different from from my experience growing up in the long house. I mean, in the long house, I I used I my father used to pl to listen to the Iban radio, and so we listened to the Iban Iban news in Iban, right? So and and and. It doesn't make him less clubbit or and, and all those things. So, so these are the things I guess I find it a bit disturbing in terms of the context of what's going on in Sarawak, that our mind become our perception about who we are become quite narrow and narrow in a sense. I think it should be, be coming up, be opening up and look at our ancestors, what did they do? You know, the values that they had and that make us who we are today, basically. Right, so learn other languages, adopt and adopt objects to the environment and, and the things that, that's what they used to do. Uh, the borrowing, you know, from each other, learning from other people. Right, next one, please. Yeah, so this, I think we need to, uh, my, 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 my point here is when to, to, to rethink about the formation of, of, of Wei Sarawak identity is for us to celebrate, not just, you know, Sometimes when I look at the way we portray our food, our dance, dances, our, our, our clothes and so on and so forth, it's just a matter of a plethora of, of, of just like that. But I think we need to look, see and think through these objects, see and think through these practices. Yeah. How do they connect us? What are values are the things that we can, we can, and, and we can, um, um, we can embrace, we can, uh, in calcate, for instance, for again going back to the definition of definition of what identity is about quality. So, what are the qualities that we want to 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 say that we are Sarawakian, right? Is it just about eating food, or or is it about how do we eat our food? Right. So, these are the things that I think we need to um, celebrate, and this is something that um, in my work during my PhD. Uh, time, uh, field work, and one of the things we 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 have done in Barrio was with our our you know working with the people in Barrio. Of course, I'm from Barrio, and 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 you know a group of us in Barrio was when we started the 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 Barrio Food and Cultural Festival. It is to celebrate connections, to celebrate what we have, and to celebrate. So perhaps a lot of people will come to the to the to the festival thinking it's just coming to eat and drink, yeah, without thinking about what are the ideas going that shape that place, that shape the idea. The idea was basically to celebrate the surround the, the, the environment, to celebrate our heritage, our food heritage, and, and through the celebration to educate the young people about clubbed food. Uh, about food that is available in the forest. Therefore, how we need to protect the forest and the river system, the landscape, um, the living, what we call the living landscape. So today with the digital technologies, how can we, you know, with, with Srawa want to be, want to embrace a digital, uh, to be a digital uh, state, a digital economy and so on and so forth. How then we can, yeah, preserve our connections, promote our connections through those new technologies. Thank you very much. <laughs>